Hello Supercard Warriors, my time here. Welcome to another episode of WWE Supercard Season 2. I'm going to stop saying Season 2 soon because I'm sure you're all aware that it is Season 2. Uh, we have the People Choice Champion up and running. It's Owens vs Ryback. Now, I ashamedly admit that I am in the Ryback fan club at the moment. But, I want to add, not by intention. Before it's started okay looking at it literally i was up till i was up at 8 a.m this morning so i decided to play it just as it just started i've clicked on tap to play okay i've gone down let's look at the leaderboard no i didn't look at the leaderboard i lied let's look at the rewards okay start to look through here and have to play i never got the screen where it said kevin owens or ryback choose your superstar now whether just because i was clicking and i've clicked when it's just as soon as it's there, I've clicked on something, it's gone away. I honestly could not tell you. I've gone to play for Superstar Play, and the next thing I've got a ride back win. I was like, huh? I never got the option to pick him. But I don't remember seeing it, and if I, if it did come up, it was for a brief second, and I must have just literally just been clicking to try and speed it up or something, and I chose him. Um, I would have gone for Owens out of preference of the two cards, in terms of who I like more. But somebody called Super Zomago Barbecue, who has millions of subscribers in his own channel, and that did a rewards uh, breakdown. And I will just quickly show what he has shown in his video, and that is that 22 cards, not a lot of difference. Kevin Owens is better than Chris, but that's it. But that doesn't make too much difference because with the whole token system, if you look at them, you could, for example, put one or two tokens into into Owens Charisma, which will keep him comfortably better than right back. And then you can either pick to boost his speed or toughness to be better than right back. Now, if you just assume he's going to lose in power most of the time, because uh, if I double check, uh, yeah, they both they both proc in power and toughness, but right back's got the adva advantage there, um, whereas. Oh, instead of better advantage in charisma, um, you're going to come across two kind of people. Either somebody with a right back card is going to focus on his power and toughness, in which case you're going to lose unless you proc. Um, for the people who are going to try and balance him out, they're going to put some tokens into charisma, and which as long as you put a couple in there, you're going to beat him in charisma. And then you can pick another attribute to be strong in. So, for example, a probably a well, I'll, personally, I would say a reasonable tactic for this card, given the situation, is to say, right, if we both proc, Ryback's going to win in power and toughness. If we don't proc, Ryback will win in power and toughness at the moment. Um, we will win in charisma, and he's slightly better in speed. So. A good tactic for for my for my perspective of doing this would be okay. Let's keep my speed as being a sorry. Let, let's let's boost my charisma slightly so that I become a reasonable reasonable charismatic card. If I get a proc in the power of toughness, I've got a chance of um, winning it. And if also boost my speed up. Um, then I will win the speed category. So you can make this card that he would beat Ryback in speed and charisma. Pretty much most Rybacks comfortably. So I'm going to assume a lot of people who have a Ryback card will start to work on his toughness and power slightly but, and won't put too much care into it. So, yeah, Kevin Owens could become... He could build into a slightly more all-round card, I would, and I would probably look to build up his speed and charisma, especially his charisma, um, and maybe just put one token in toughness and power at the at the end once he's proed and then play that you're relying on his proc if you come against another strong card but make him a bit more of an all round card uh, but as you go down the interesting thing is you've still got ranked a thousand the, the, the event cards all the way down to 2150 up to there you can get an event card so rather than it being top 200 or so now uh, it's 2150 and what this is going to do is in the past there was say people who were ranked between 130 to say 350 who would all have a chance of getting the card and they would probably play towards the end and try and get in that rank to get the event card all those above that were probably comfortably in they'd already played enough they didn't have to button bash at the end to try and get in all those below had no chance to get there 
Now what they've done is they've opened up the pool of players that can get these cards. So rather than it being the top, like, you know, echelon of players, they've gone down the pyramid and they're now going to take a thicker chunk of players, people who are ranked between 1,000 and kind of like 4,000 are going to have a chance of still getting this card if they can put the time in, especially towards the end. So they're going to encourage people to buy packs to try and get duplicates and better cards if they need them to do better in the event. They're going to encourage people to buy more title matches. And they're, they've opened up their kind of net to scoop in a lot more people to get them involved in the event. Now, there are going to be some people that will get nowhere close to it, but there are going to be a lot of people who could potentially get there and they're going to try and encourage them to do so. So from their perspective, they probably sat back and realised we're going to get, we're going to make more money out of it like this, and we're going to get more people involved, and more people will get this card, and then as a result, the more people that have this card, the more people that will try for the next event if it comes up to get the card, etc., etc. So on their behalf, I see exactly why they've done it. There might be people at the top of the game that think, oh, it's not going to be so, uh, so kind of, um, so kind of unique. Now, if, there's, if, if they start opening up some of the better cards to more people, but from their perspective, it's um, it's just it's, it's a it's a ploy to try and get you know more people involved in the game, and eventually more, um, hopefully more people spending a bit of money in the game. As you go down to lesser rewards, what has been highlighted by Zoma God himself is 28 days this month for playing the game 28 different days you get Sephirolians and the Sephirolian reward here will mean an ultra rare pro for people and as we scroll down to the lesser regions 31 551 we can get a sting and this was the 21 day reward for this month so there are two pros there that you can get from playing people's champion by going with Ryback, where they're not necessarily going to be pros if you go with Kevin Owens. So uh, that's not looking at the stats, that's just about playing cards. Two um, two cards that the game has given you. Now, if they wanted to balance it out, they could have put, for example, one of them onto Kevin Owens and one onto Ryback. Uh, but they put them all over there, so he's kind of weighted towards being the... Um, the one people will go for, not because necessarily they particularly need his card or want his card, but because he has better sub rewards. Now, People's Choice plays out like exhibition, put in your deck. Uh, if you notice my deck, it's not quite in epic, and as a result, I struggle in the plus, well, it would be plus five, but mine says plus ten because I have. The title match is going. So you play, you win a game, you get one point for your chosen superstar, and you get either one, three, or five points depending which bout you went for for your own personal points. See, mine is at 304, top right hand corner, and I'm using the title match, which means you get double points. So I will get two, six, or ten respectively. So I'm just going to play a couple of games and explain a bit about people's champ people's choice champion even while I'm doing so plus one games will be the should we say the easiest they should be generally people which you can beat literally every time okay so that's the that's the nature of it it's there to try and um, be the mode that you will grind and grind and grind through if you were struggling with the la latter ones now depending what tier you're in like I said, I'm near the top of ultra rare so your plus threes like I'm playing now should be okay for me I should win the majority and I will probably win 85 90% maybe I do lose a few depends on props and depends on a couple of the people I come across there have been a couple of decks that um, have had some should we say uh couple of rigged, rigged cards which I just got no chance against and then if you go for the for the plus fives you're gonna be coming against people in the top end of your tier so people who should probably nearly be in the tier above or possibly are just about in the tier above I'm not too sure exactly 
how they work it out for this um but certainly i if i were to go for example i will do one now and play ryan just to show you um i will probably lose 2-1 and the reason i'll probably lose 2-1 is because i don't have an outstanding single male now i'll show you this. my divas aren't too bad okay they're not compatible but to be both super rare pros uh, they got a chance like if i get this but here you go perfect example um picked her picked naomi because she does proc in charisma and just in case we're a bit behind she's got the proc so i can win the, i can win a diva uh, i could get lucky here with two divas okay well, i've been lucky in this occasion so i'm not going to take this as oh i should be doing plus tens all the time but you will see when we come, when i show you the males in just a moment if you look at my team i don't have anyone that stands out i don't have that legendary card i don't have that epic pro so i'm pretty much going to lose one solo match all the time and if you look at my tag team uh my best is taker now i could potentially put in a super rare pro jack swagger to go and tag with austin but austin is weaker than both Shawn michaels and the miz overall so i thought it was better to put in taker and um, I've got a chance there. I can proc on toughness and power with Taker. I can proc on power and charisma with the Miz. I can proc on speed and charisma with Sean. So I can kind of get a proc and the compatibility there. But for this one, I will put down Taker and Miz. And you're probably going to see a strong card. Okay, yeah, so there you go. They got perfect pro Jack Swagger, perfect pro uh, loyalty. Riley Woody Piper. So compatibilities will help me and it might get me to win. I didn't even see what we were in. Okay, so I've been lucky to win this one, I admit that. But another time they've probably got a single which is a epic pro or something. And I tend to lose them two one. Um I say I win maybe forty percent of the plus five games. Forget that that said plus ten. I'm gonna to refer to them in their non title match. Um, thing so that was a board reset so I'll try again so I can show you I probably win yeah about 40% whereas I can get 85-90% of the plus threes so in the long run it's mathematically better for me just to run plus three matches uh, if I was 50-50 with the plus uh, plus fives and say 70 percent with the plus threes and yeah fine i'd run the plus fives because in the long run i'm going to do better but here you will see this is another another example of um what happened close and close in the win in the divas lose now i'm not going to win in the speed unless i get a proc with Shawn michaels because undertaker is low in speed um see perfect pro and, uh, and an epic uh compatible i lose and I need, I need luck with the Divas pretty much for me to be able to do well in these. So this is kind of generally what happens. I lose 2-1. So I've given up spending too much time on these. Because if I win if I win two... Come on. Thank you. If I win two um, of the plus threes... Then I get six points. If I win one plus five and lose one plus five, I get five points. So mathematically, long run, I'm better to stick with the games that I have a better chance in winning in. So that that's the theory behind it, guys. Especially, especially if you're using titles, you want to you want to win the match. And unless if it's if it's a person that comes up and it's harder in these ranks, it's a lot harder. Those of you that are in the top tiers will have a smaller pool of players at the moment obviously it will increase but you have a smaller pool of players who you will be up against and you will begin to see some people on a regular basis and you'll see their cards and you'll know if you can beat them or not if you can beat them then fine you can play them as the plus five uh, if it's somebody who you know is definitely going to beat you there is there is no point you have to refresh your list by going back and coming back in to a different person comes up or you have to bite the bullet and go down and try something else so you know um, you might even find 
the further you progress in it, you end up having to do plus ones or plus twos, like a bit like Road to Glory, where you end up, as you progress through, having to drop down because the opponents become more and more difficult. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that PCC is more of a grinding event, whereas I like Ring Domination. I think it's fun. I think it's interesting. I like the tactical side to it. I did do Ring Domination video. Um, it's up to you whether you want to take any, you know. Oh, great card limit. Any kind of notice of it or not. Um, that is up to you. But my um, my strategy works for me. And I enjoy that. I kind of enjoy the idea of trying to, you know, pit yourself against I know it's only a computer AI and you can kind of work out what they're going to do but there's a bit more to it than this this is basically exhibition mode and they've just called it something else because it's the same idea it's the same five or uh, five uh, sorry same six cards that you will use and it's the same idea of just playing exhibition except for there's another reward to it so I, I really do like ring domination but with that said I'm gonna um, just combine a couple of these and probably end the video short uh, before I do go I'm going to ask what did you guys think of Night of Champions um, I had a really really interesting idea okay I'd have liked to have seen and bear me a second when I explain this because it might sound stupid but I think it would work really well I'd like to have seen it play out the way it did and as Seamus comes down to interrupt Rylands and you know, cash in out comes Kane. Cool. Kane comes down. Uh, Seamus can't believe it. He takes. He jumps out the ring. Runs. Jumps over the barricade. And he's down there hiding, peering out. Kane comes in. You know, choke slams Rollins. Tombstone Rollins. Everyone's like, oh, Kane's back. Look at this. Walks out. Out of ramp he goes. Then we see Seamus peer over. Jumps out. In the ring, running the bank, goes to the timekeeper, ring the bell, ring the bell. Timekeeper takes it, rings it. Referee at this time, he's gone, isn't he? Kane's come down, the match is over, you know, he's run. There's no referee. She says, referee, referee. He's pulling Rollins into the ring, referee. He's got him, looking around. Suddenly, we see a ref run out from the locker room. Long sleeve, shirt, trousers cat down over his eyes running out to the ring Seamus there got him pinned he runs in slides under one two then he gets up Seamus is there going look at her hat comes off Seamus stands up not knowing what's going on look round to F to say what are you doing it's Randy Orton isn't it kick into the stomach RKO he's on the floor Orton then pulls Seth's arm puts it over his chest one, two, three. Seth wins. Seth has defended. Seamus has lost his money in the bank. And now he's going to the authority. Oh, and oh my gosh. That can't be. He wasn't He wasn't a referee. I've still got. And they can do something. Are they going to avoid the match? Are they not going to avoid the match? It's completely up to them and then what story they want to do. But to make it better, because I think Autumn was meant to be off for a while. I'd have got it, but this is more. This is more obvious. The problem, the problem with this is, Orton could look like a ref in that way. He wouldn't be noticed until he got closer to the ring. But I'd have used uh, Kevin Owens, and had him come down like that, and then his whole idea could have been you could have ended the Orton Sheamus rivalry for a while, and Owens could have said you don't deserve that shot. You know, you don't have a title, you don't deserve a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. What have you done? You know. I've beaten John Cena, who is the United States Championship in my debut. I've just beaten my back. I've got an Intercontinental. I deserve it, not you. And that could have started a rivalry there, uh, as well as promoting Kevin. So he gets closer to the World Heavyweight Championship kind of, should we say, storyline. Because he's come in, he's beaten his people, and he's had these matches... And he's gone from getting the United States Championship, which is seen as a second belt, to dropping down and getting the Intercontinental belt. Now, whilst they've done that to give him a title, 
and to try and build him like that, it's it's like a step back. So it'd be a good way to go up slightly by having him and involved in a heavyweight kind of storyline. And I think that would have that would have played well. It would have given it a bit more a bit more kind of um should we say diversity now that Sting's probably gone, he's injured, so he's probably not gonna really be in that that frame. They might try and bring Kane back into it somehow now and change the storyline. But we've lost Brock and The Undertaker for now. They've got their own storyline. So they've just given John Cena the United States Championship back. So, so where where is this where is this title rivalry gonna come from now? They've they've taken a lot of the big players away. So it would have been a perfect time to give someone like either Randy Orton if they wanted to try and keep that rivalry going with Sheamus a bit and his fan favourite or Kevin Owens a go to bring someone else into it who's not necessarily going to get a title about but it's going to be there or thereabouts and someone else for them to kind of like fill in the void until we finish with your know, Brock Undertaker and um, you know until um, they we, we see how this whole Kane thing develops and stuff. So that was my thought. Anyway, let me know what you thought. Let me know if you enjoyed Night Champions. Also, let me know how you're doing in this PCC. Who did you go for? How how long are you going to try and play? Is there any reward that you're trying to get? Um, as I said, unfortunately, I think democracy um, rules here. I said, picking my heart, I would have gone for Owens, but I'm glad that I just messed it up without meaning to. Because Ryback's probably, probably going to, going to win. Um, so I'd like to have a chance of his card. I don't know if I'm going to make it. To be honest with you, I have a lot of work coming up for the weekend. I'm not sure if I'm going to have the time. I'll see if I can put in some hours tonight. Maybe I'll do a video to show how it's going. But other than that, probably for a few days, I'm going to do some stuff on Dungeon Link, and I was going to do NBA 2K15. Which is the same as this, but I just with basketball, but with 2K16 and have been released on 1st of October, I might wait for that. So, yeah, if you have any games already, you suggest me trying. Uh, let me know. I might go back to some old games. I used to have some Blood Brothers 1 and 2, did quite well in the original, but I stopped that. And here was a Camelot as well. I played, I had a decent deck there, and I left that for others. So, I might go back into them, anything that you fancy seeing or games that I could give a go, let me know. And if I, if I enjoy them, I'll give a shout out to it and I'll show some play of me starting it up. Anyway, good luck with your PCC. Take care, you've been listening to my time.